بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا حبيبنا محمد عبده ورسوله أرسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا وداعيا إلى الله بإذنه وسراجا منيرا أما بعد My dear brothers and sisters I want to talk about our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the context that Rabi'ul Awwal is just around the corner Today is the last few days or today is the 27th or 28th of Safar, as you know, within the next few days, this month will be over. Rabi'ul Awwal is when Rasul was born. 12th of Rabi'ul Awwal, according to some historians, some say 9th, some say 11th, whichever day. At the beginning of Rabi'ul Awwal, our beloved Prophet was born. Many Muslims celebrate his birth by doing many things. Some do Mawlud and Nabi, some do processions. Some distribute sweets. Lots of people do lots of things to mark his birth. Rasul wasallam used to fast on the day he was born. He fasted every Mondays and Thursdays. And when the companions asked, Ya Rasulullah, why do you fast on a Monday? He said, I fast because I was born on this day. To thank Allah for giving me life. To thank Allah for giving me this amazing opportunity. So my brothers and sisters, if you truly want to celebrate the birthday of the Prophet of Allah وسلم, then you should be fasting on Mondays if you can, also Thursdays, like Rasulullah did. However, we like to limit the birthdays to one day when we do all sorts of things that Prophet himself perhaps have never done. But leaving aside that particular discussion, I want to talk about Prophet Muhammad وسلم's character today. Allah Azza wa Jal did not send anybody on this earth who claimed to be a prophet but was a nasty person. Allah did not send anyone on this earth who claimed to be a prophet but was a liar, a dishonest person, was a traitor, a treacherous person, was an evil person. No prophet has ever claimed and then demonstrated such behavior and got away with it. Never. Because human beings would very quickly soon, very soon assess the characteristics and qualities of these people and quite rightly so would either lambast them as liars, deceivers or embrace them as true prophets Prophet of Allah وسلم, was accepted has been accepted and will be accepted by humanity forever as one of the best person to have ever walked the face of this earth when the very famous writer Michael Hart wrote his book about the 100 most in influential people on the face of this earth and he investigated he looked and he tried to find who could be the most influential man on the face of this earth he studied all the prophets Moses, Jesus, Abraham and many other great influential people in historical names Buddha and many other names that he could come across and he writes in his book in his introduction that I did my best but I had no other choice for every criteria that I had selected, Muhammad وسلم, excelled in all of them. And therefore I had to put him as the most influential man to ever walk the face of this earth. So my brothers and sisters, we are very fortunate and we should thank Allah for the greatest opportunity and fortune that he has given us all. And that is to follow his beloved Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and to be part of his ummah for we are very blessed to have a prophet like that and also at the introduction let me make it very clear Allah says that in the Quran وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَىٰ خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٌ مُحَمَّدٍ in you surely وَإِنَّكَ and in you surely لَعَلَىٰ خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٌ there is the highest moral standard most sublime supreme character that, that there is in other words O oh Muhammad you are the yardstick you are the true manifestation of what morality and good conduct is. Allah confirms that in the Quran by calling him 
wa innaka la ala khuluqin azim is a certification of the prophet of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam allah in the quran also says oh muhammad you're nothing but a mercy to the entire universe another certification allah offers to beloved prophet of allah muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and what is most remarkable allah does not mention this about any other prophets or any other individuals to have ever walked the face of this earth except the case of prophet of allah muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam where allah says in Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi ya ayu alladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima subhanallah what a bus he says in the quran in Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi surely Allah and his angels are sending their salutations peace and blessings upon beloved prophet muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and therefore ya ayu alladhina amanu those who believe or you who believe for you it is an incumbent it is an obligation all those who believe whenever you hear the name of muhammad say sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for for every time you say sallallahu alayhi wa sallam you'll get the reward for it in fact you'll get 10 reward for every time you say muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so my brothers and sisters we find following the prophet understanding the prophet and the praise of the prophet an integral part of our faith so I want to bring the character of the Prophet to the fore. But before I do that, Ibn Taymiyyah rahmatullahi alayhi wrote something very beautiful. He said, It is known that someone who claims to be a Prophet is either one of the best and the noblest of creation or the worst and the most wicked of them. So how could there be ever, how could there ever be any confusion between the best and the noblest and between the worst and the most wicked? There has never been any liar who claimed prophethood except that his ignorance, dishonesty, wickedness and devilish ways became clear to anyone who possessed the smallest degree of discernment or smallest degree of brain. Whoever possesses the smallest degree of brain would immediately know if somebody is true or somebody is false. And Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu was true to his bone, to his core, to his message. So Rasul Sallallahu virtue, his character has also been outlined by many scholars throughout time but today I'm going to talk about a few of his characteristics the first one his honesty and his integrity Prophet ﷺ was a person whose honesty was common knowledge to all of those people around him in fact his own people his tribes man and woman his clans people people around him in Mecca and surrounding area knew him with one title called Al-Amin and Al-Sadiq the trustworthy and the truthful in fact, my brothers and sisters, when Rasulullah was, was young, Abdul Muttalib, as his grandfather, being his caretaker, because he had lost his father and his mother, Abdul Muttalib was the one who was leader of the Quraysh. He would give the Meccans, as well as anybody from all over Arabia who came to do pilgrimage. At that time, pilgrimage continued, not like the Hajj we have, but their own version. Abdul Muttalib was the center figure. Nobody came to Hajj without saying salam to Abdul Muttalib. Nobody came to Hajj without getting fed or given water by Abdul Muttalib and his tribe. So everybody met Abdul Muttalib when they came to Mecca for pilgrimage. If Muhammad Sallallahu was young and was walking around with his grandfather, surely they also came to see Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in his younger age. And they were all impressed by this boy's character and quality. And they slowly, slowly began, even from the outside Arabian Peninsula, that there is a man in Arabia a young man in Arabia, a noble man in Arabia, his people call him Al-Amin and Al-Sadiq. My brothers and sisters, that is an amazing testament of a person's character. If the society with whom you live call you the most trustworthy and truthful person, then you have made it. There was an incident where the, the Kaaba itself had broken because of a flood. And the flood had dislodged various stones, brickwork, even broken the walls. The Meccans came together to rebuild the Kaaba. When they, all the tribes came together to rebuild the Kaaba, after building the Kaaba, now it was turn for them to put the black stone back to its original place. And putting the black stone back to its original place would have been an honor for any tribe to claim. And every tribe was competing to take this honor. Which tribe is going to be the honorable, most loved by the people, most honored by Allah when they place this stone on the corner of the Kaaba? They were about to fight, about to argue, about to fall out. One man from amongst the tribe said, why are we arguing over something so good? We just leave it for Allah to decide. We're all involved in this. Why don't we wait for somebody to...
to come into this vicinity of the Kaaba first thing in the morning tomorrow. The one who is not from amongst us, in other words, who is not involved in rebuilding the Kaaba, whoever enters the vicinity of the Kaaba first thing in the morning will accept their mediation on this matter. They are all waiting to see who enters the vicinity of the Kaaba from the darkness as the a daylight breaks and the darkness disappears and the mist and all the fog through that walks Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam the young one as he's walking all of the people of Arabia and Mecca all in chorus shout oh al amin our sabiq is coming whatever he says will accept his verdict this is how they trusted him this is how they believed in him this is how they gave character reference to beloved prophet of Allah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam my brothers and sisters not only did he become known as Al-Amin and As-Sadiq in his society, Aisha radiallahu anha said, he instructed Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu an to stay behind in Mecca when he was migrating from Mecca to Medina. When he was migrating from Mecca to Medina, why was he migrating? Because people of Mecca were about to attack him. They conspired to kill him. In fact, they surrounded his house in Mecca to kill him on that night. That was the plan. Allah inspired the Prophet and told Rasulullah to migrate that day. But before he migrated, he told Ali ibn Abi Talib, Oh Ali, all of these people of Mecca, they have left their possessions with me. I have money from them. I have their jewelry. I have their property in my custody in my house. I'm not going to be here tomorrow morning because I'm migrating. But they need these properties to be returned to them. Please, yeah, Ali, stay here. And tomorrow morning when, they, when, when I have left, when the news travels that I've left, Please make sure you return the possession of the people back to them. My brothers and sisters, what a quality. His own people are persecuting him. They are driving, driving him out of his own house. He has their wealth in his possession because they still trusted him better than the bank, better, better than those warlords or the tribal leaders. They still had their wealth with him. And Prophet could have taken all the wealth with him because they're driving him away. But he made sure Ali would stay and he would return wealth to individual people. That's why his integrity, his honesty and his knowledge, his uh, people's knowledge about his character was so amazing. One skeptic may have an opinion about the Prophet contrary to the ones that you and I have. But here it's an amazing historian known by the name Thomas Carlyle who wrote about the Prophet of Allah وسلم, in the following words. He said, it goes greatly against the imposter theory, the fact that he lived in, his, in this entirely unexceptionable, entirely quiet and commonplace way, till the heat of his years was alone. He was 40 before he talked of any mission from heaven. All his irregularities, real and supposed, date from after his 50th year when the good Khadija died all his ambitions seemingly had been hitherto to live an honest life his fame the mere good opinion of neighbors that knew him had been sufficient here hitherto not till he was already getting old and peace growing to be the chief thing this world could give him did he start on the career of ambition and belaying all his past character and existence set up by others as an as a wretched empty charlatan to acquire what he could now no longer enjoy for my share i have no faith whatever in the imposter theory for muhammad could not have been an imposter if he wanted fame he could have had fame if he wanted power he could have had power if he wanted people to worship him he could have had that if he wanted to become the richest man, he could have had that. They offered it to him. Rasul said, no, I'm not here for any of those things. I'm here to invite you to life of honesty and integrity, life of goodness and life of kindness, like he himself lived. My brothers and sisters, we find Rasul life meticulously recorded by people. And everybody, whoever is asked, responds was the same. When Abu Sufyan was asked the same question, I asked whether Abu Sufyan was asked by um, the Roman Emperor Heraclius. He said, uh, Heraclius, he said, I asked you whether you ever accused him of lying before he stated that he is a prophet. You replied in the negative. And I know that he would not refrain from lying about others and then lie about God. 
And I asked you whether he ever betrayed anyone. You replied in the negative. And likewise, the messengers never betrays. If what you are saying is true, he will conquer the very place of my two feet today. And I know from my scripture that he would soon emerge. But I never assumed that he would be from amongst your people. And if I knew that I could reach him safely, I would have been bent on meeting him. And if I were in his presence, I would personally wash his feet. This is the Roman Emperor Heraclius saying to Abu Sufyan, when Abu Sufyan was asked the questions about Rasul My brothers and sisters, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu character is impeccable. Even those who were opposing him couldn't find faults in his character. Why do I mention it? It's because following his character is more important than giving out jilebi and baklava on his birthday. It is more important for you to follow his character than do procession and any other occasions of celebration that you may do on his birthday. My brothers and sisters, his character is sublime. His character is what Allah wants you to follow. And that's what Allah says in the Quran. In you, there is the most sublime example of good character. My brothers and sisters, he lived a humble life, a simple life. Prophet ﷺ could have been the richest of man Arabia had ever seen. And yet, he lived in a house made of mud hut, straw and uh, palm tree leaves to cover the top as his roof. His house was not big enough for him to pray. In tahajjud prayer, when he would go for sijda, he would ask Aisha to roll up in the corner and make space so that he could put his head down on the ground. My brothers and sisters, when Rasul was in his house one day, and Umar ibn Khattab anhu came and saw him lying down and uh, knocked on the door and Rasul said to Umar, come in. When Umar came in and he looked around and he noticed the meager ration Rasul had in his house. And he started crying. Rasul said, oh Umar, oh Umar ibn Khattab, what makes you cry? He said, oh Prophet of Allah, how can I not cry after seeing how the mat has left these marks on your backside? How little you have in your own possession in terms of food. Caesar of the present superpower, Khosrus of present superpower, lives surrounded by fruits and springs of water, while you are the messenger of Allah, the chosen one. And yet, this is your condition? Prophet ﷺ replied, O son of Al-Khattab, does it not please you that these luxuries are for us in the hereafter and for them in this world? I said, of course, O beloved Prophet of Allah, in this is sufficient. On another narration, it is said, are you in doubt, O son of Al-Khattab? These are a people whose pleasures have been expedited in this life of this world. My brothers and sisters, Prophet ﷺ lived a very humble life. Life that wasn't pretentious. Life that wasn't complicated. Edward Gibbons, in his book of history, he writes an amazing account of the Prophet. He said, the good, good sense of Muhammad despised the pomp of royalty. The apostle of God submitted to menial offices of family he kindled the fire, swept the floor, milked the ewes, and mended his own, with his own hand, his own shoes and garment, disbaining the penance and merits of a hermit. He observed without effort or vanity the abstention diet of an Arab. He simply led a simple life. That's why he's revered, remembered, followed, loved by all of us and praised in the heavens by Allah and his angels. My brothers and sisters, Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was the example for and his example for all of us in everything that we do. His mercy and his compassion encompassed everything. The character of Prophet Muhammad وسلم, is described in the Quran and when Aisha radiallahu anha was asked, Oh Aisha, please tell us about Muhammad, your pro Prophet of Allah, your husband. But Aisha said, didn't you read the Quran? And the companion felt very uncomfortable by the response. He said, of course I read the Quran. 
Aisha said, Rasulullah was the living manifestation of the Quran. Beloved Prophet of Allah وسلم, showed mercy to even his enemies. My brothers and sisters, we can go on and on giving examples of our Prophet of Allah وسلم's mercy. He stood in prayers and one day he said, when I'm standing in prayer and I can hear the cries of the babies, I feel that the mothers are feeling uncomfortable. They can't concentrate in, my, in their prayers. So I shorten the recitation of the Quran and I speed up the prayer so that I don't discomfort the mothers and the babies. My brothers and sisters, this is the example of our beloved Prophet of Allah وسلم. And yet some of us complain when babies or children make noise in the masjid. Some of us don't want to bring our children to the masjid because we think they will cause trouble for us. My brothers and sisters, Rasulullah was praying and his grandson was playing on his back. The companions were behind him in sajda. He stayed in sujood for a very long time. He didn't get up. The companions didn't realize what was going on, so they stood. They stayed in the sajda. After a long period, he got up, completed his prayer, and the companions were eager, waiting for Rasulullah to tell him what revelation came. So they said, Ya Rasulullah, what was, the re what was revealed to you in sajda today? Rasulullah said, nothing. So why did you stay in sajda for so long today? Usually you would get up after, to, after the tasbih. Why would you stay in, in sajda for so long? Rasulullah said, said, oh, the hat. My grandson was playing on my back. He was using my back as a seesaw or a slide. And I did not want to take away his joy, his pleasure of playing on my back. So I prolonged my sajda. My brothers and sisters, this is the example of Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who we should be following not just eating baklava and jilebi on his birthday not only doing processions and maulud and nabi but to be following his examples in our life in the way we treat one another in the way we treat our children in the way we behave in the way we present Islam to everybody my brothers and sisters even his ardent enemy Abu Jahl who plotted to kill who broke the bonds of companions who killed the first of the female companions, the first of the shuhada from Islam, Sumayya radiallahu anha. He was a brutal man. And yet Rasulullah used to say, Ya Allah, guide Abu Jahl or Umar ibn Khattab to Islam, despite all the evil Abu Jahl had perpetrated against Islam and the Muslims. Rasulullah's mercy encompassed and stretched beyond our, our imagination. I invite you all to consider the life of Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam more vividly and try and follow this example of our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because he ultimately is our example. May Allah enable all of us to follow the examples of our beloved Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam meticulously and send our salutations, peace and blessings of Allah upon our beloved Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Wa akhir da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم. Time is short, but is there is a lot to say. But I don't want to say too much because there are many books that you can read about the life of our beloved Prophet of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Not uh, this Sunday, but following Sunday, insha Allah, we'll be holding a talk and we'll be inviting a good speaker, a good scholar, We're trying to get him. He wrote a book on the life of the Rasul of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Insha Allah, so do. Keep your eyes open. You should be able to come and listen to it. But read the life of the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, please. Pick up a book and read it. Read it with your children. Don't just listen to lectures. Lectures are not enough. Because lectures come in one ear, goes out through the other ear. When you read, your brain is engaged. When your brain is engaged, you'll remember it. Read the life of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, beginning to the end, as many times as you can. The more you read, the more you discover. I've just picked up a new book on the life of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In the first two pages, I learned something new that I had never known. And yet, I probably have read at least 20 books on the life of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Something you learn from the life of the Prophet of Allah every day. So please pick up the book and read. So for, to finish off today, Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is mis much misunderstood by non-Muslims and by Muslims. Muslims misunderstand him. They kiss their hand and they rub their eyes. They do all sorts of rituals except one most important one. They don't follow the Rasul of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in his conduct and his behavior. My brothers and sisters, that's what you're required to do. Allah will ask you this on the Day of Judgment. Did you follow my Prophet's examples? 
the Quranic example that he lived on this earth manifestation of Quran that he left le left for us by his behavior by his conduct by the way he treated one another that's what Allah will ask you and I not whether you ate the pumpkin Rasulullah liked whether you put footsteps on the same steps where Rasulullah walked there is a very nice story there is a there was a tree underneath which Rasulullah was sitting and resting and Ibn Amr who used to love sitting down under the same tree because of Rasulullah he used to love it or Amr ibn Khattab came and chopped that tree off so Ibn Amr his son said to me to him, why did you chop this off Amr ibn Khattab said something very interesting he said it is not important for you to sit under the same tree as Rasulullah that is not the sunnah the sunnah is to follow his examples in the way you do things in the way you manage your life in the way you do your business your economy in your country the way you manage your country the way you manage your family and your friends the way you talk the way you behave the way you manage your anger the way you manage your emotions that's what sunnah is my brothers and sisters follow Rasulullah like we should be following we ask Allah Azza wa Jal to enable all of us to follow his footsteps properly and accordingly I want to also remind you the tragedy that has happened in Morocco and in uh, Libya recently we make dua to Allah that Allah relieves them from the calamities that have fallen on the people of those regions may Allah free them from the troubles and make it easy for them and give them patience to be able to bear with their pain if you want to donate uh, please donate there are so many charities that are doing work one of those charities just give when we are ready we'll let you know but we are working on the ground with some of the charities inshallah some of you have been asking me make dua for them reach out to friends and families and find out how you can help them and don't jump on a plane and think I'm gonna go and sort them out you're not uh, the superhero that that's what they they don't need that they've got their own systems there but that's the second thing I wanted to bring to your attention my brothers and sisters and the final one our message alhamdulillah is coming slowly slowly 31st of October is our final deadline to raise the remaining amount of money just in case you've forgotten I haven't been here for a little while and uh, we are going around different massages collecting money but we need your help we have about 750 to 800 people who are on our whatsapp group we got about a thousand people coming for Jum'ah if you all made a promise to raise a thousand pounds from now until the 31st of uh, October we would have reached our target our target is to raise two million let me make it very clear to you out of the two million we need to pay 1.4 million pounds to the original owner last installment everything is then ours with no debt nothing to the original owners but we have borrowed money from the Muslim community Alhamdulillah you've given lots of donations you've given lots of Qard Hasana would like to pay some Qard Hasana by January so we're targeting to raise two million by 31st of October so we pay people their debt because some people have given money for a short period they need their money back so two million pounds target all I'm asking you all to do is you've got six weeks from today six weeks from now 31st of October is the deadline you can all make a promise that I will raise or donate a thousand pounds for this message inshallah you've given so much the last one the last push before we say we are free of debt from the original owners inshallah please my brothers and sisters don't hesitate whether you give today or tomorrow start raising the money we've got all sorts of links that are on the WhatsApp there are campaigns going on for two pounds you can join in there are campaigns going for a thousand pounds you can go join in there are campaigns going for olive trees I'm saying do whatever you want but I'm asking you to take one target if all of us raised a thousand pounds each that would be a million pound within a matter of few weeks so please my brothers and sisters don't let me remind you again and again it is our message it is our journey and once we have done that then we can focus on the redevelopment tasks which is a massive one in front of us we make dua ya arhamur rahimin ya kamula come in accept our dua ya Allah accept our good efforts ya Allah bring us together ya Allah forgive us our sins ya Arab ya arhamur rahimin enable us to follow your beloved prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam's footsteps ya Allah enable us to love him ya Allah and ya arhamur rahimin accept everything that we do for you ya Allah free our brothers and sisters in all parts of the world that are in trouble ya Allah especially ya arhamur rahimin free our brothers and sisters from the awful calamity that have befallen our brothers in Morocco as well as in Libya ya Allah Free them, Ya Allah. Give them patience, Ya Allah. Give them strength, Ya Allah. Ya Rahman Rahim and protect our families, Ya Allah. Protect our families, Ya Allah. Forgive us our sins, Ya Allah. Forgive us our sins, Ya Allah. Keep us, keep us united, Ya Allah. Rabbana taqabbal minna inna kanta samil alim. Watub alayna ya maulana inna kanta tawabur rahim. Inna Allah ya'mul bilad wa l-ihsan. Wa ita'id al-qurba. Wa anha'an al-fahshai wa al-munkar. Al-baghi ya'idukum la'allakum da'dakarun. Fadhkurun ya'dhkurukum wa shkurun wa takfurun. Wa Allahu ya'lam wa tisna'un. Aqim al-salaam. Please stand up and make the line straight. Don't do it, come here. Don't do it, come here.